Sentry is in sight. Alright, so we're back once again today, and as you can probably see from the title of the video, from the gameplay that I'm showing you right now, submarines are in the game, and my impressions are pretty much pretty obvious to be told. I find them incredibly dull, incredibly boring, and not very, not very impactful in the game, shall we say. Now, obviously there's a couple of things to consider here. This is only the first couple of days they're out. They are in their own battle mode. They aren't introduced into random battles yet. So, take everything with a grain of salt. That being said, though, there's a couple of things I want to touch on. Um, the first have been... Um, just how difficult and how uninspiring these things are to play. With DDs, you can imagine so many things you can do. With battleships, you can imagine one-shotting ships from across the map. With cruisers... You imagine sitting in smoke of Smolensk and farming 150,000 damage, going, yes, I made someone else's gameplay so incredibly boring that it probably made them want to quit the game. With submarines, it just feels like I'm in a golf cart underwater where maybe I'll hit a torpedo or two if everything goes my way. Um, that's the impression I get playing this, playing this class of ship or class of whatever you want to call it. Um, there's a couple of clips here. The first main thing I want to touch on is just how difficult it is to get sonar pulses. Um, if if you're unfamiliar, basically there's white sonar pulses and there's narrow sonar pulses. If you use the white pulses, basically the ship you're aiming at has to be near stationary for them to actually have a really strong effect. But if you're using the narrow pulses, it basically, if you hit both of them on both edges of the ship, the ship, the torpedoes basically become homing torpedoes and you're pretty much guaranteed to hit them as long as the pulses stay active on the enemy ship you're aiming at. What I don't like about this is that it's very one dimensional. If if you don't hit them, you're basically not going to hit your torpedoes. Also to the fact that hitting the pulses can be really awkward, especially not so much in surface ships but on submarines. Uh, it's, really, it's very difficult to tell depth, angling, is the submarine coming up, is it going down, is it turning, or is it coming straight at me, is it going away? These are, these, you lose all sense of direction when you're underwater. Now you could always, obviously say, um, why don't you shoot your torpedoes when you're above water? Well, then I'm no different to a uh, destroyer, <laughs> like, there's no point in playing the submarine at all in that case. Um, Another thing you need to take be aware of if you're actually considering playing these this class is the range. Um, range is incredibly important. Not so much for the fact that you'll basically die in five seconds if you get spotted underwater and there's a destroyer nearby. It's more to the fact if you're shooting torpedoes and the enemy ship or enemy submarine is too close, you have to have the sonar pulses already locked on the enemy ship. Now there's a problem with this, um, as you see me getting dropped by an enemy destroyer right now if if you shoot your sonar pulses first basically you're going to be detected um, and with detection it becomes so 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 risky Problem solved, sir. Um, because again that destroyed just did 75% of my HP with no repercussions at all um, now you could say that if you position your submarine correctly submarines the uh, destroyer that is, that is attacking you could be in a very vulnerable position but again being able to do 75% of uh, another ship's uh, health with that ease is pretty um, pretty annoying to be honest um, another thing I want to touch on though is the positioning now there was a lot of concerns going into this about submarines being released and how battleships are going to counter them um, basically from what I've seen so far <clears throat> The submarines move so slowly, especially underwater. Um, I think above water they go about 25 knots. Around the, none, none, none of the submarines that I've played, although this is tier 6, I think, um, none of them I've played go faster than 30 knots. And there's definitely, I think, destroyers um, above 30 knots. 
I think at tier 6? Yeah, I think so. Um, here's another little clip of me basically shooting torpedoes first and hoping to get uh, the, a detection or a, a couple of shots off on the Leander. I shot my torpedoes too early, they weren't angled correctly, and as a result I could only get one hit. And at that point, it's GG. I die. And here's highlighting just how difficult it is to get pulses on um, enemy submarines. Right here, I have no idea if he's surfacing, going down, turning, or oh, what's, what's his actual speed is. There's no reference point here. You're basically just aiming at a mass in a color. Like, it, it's very um, discerning. So you basically have to shoot a couple of pulses just to figure out where the ship's actually moving, first of all. And doing that drains your battery, which means if you do it too often, uh, if, you, if your accuracy isn't great, um, like mine is, so far, is you're basically going to drain your battery, and when you drain your battery, you have no more pulses, so you can't shoot torpedoes, you have no actual uh, offensive capabilities, not even spotting really, which means you have to surface, you're going to be exposed, and if there's a destroyer nearby, you're going to die. Um, and that's really frustrating, to be honest. Um, but, going back to the battleship issue. With battleships, um, a lot of people are going to be saying there's no way battleships can counter, you know, this this issue or these submarines. I don't even think that's going to be an issue, to be honest. At least not until the later states of the game. The main issue here is going to be how can submarines even get to battleships? <laughs> I mean, as you can see in this game, there's three destroyers, I think, in each side. Um, with three destroyers, those, game, those type of games and even random battles aren't all that uncommon having three, three destroyers in each team. So, with three destroyers, I mean, and the amount of time it's going to take you to flank, if you want to avoid the destroyers, go straight for the battleships, you have to flank all the way around, kind of like a Shimakaze does. But the thing that the Shimakaze has that you don't necessarily have is speed. By the time you manage to flank the whole way around the map and get to the enemy uh, battleships, the game's probably already going to be decided, and any effect you can have is going to be really, really minimal. Now that being said, uh, it's not all bad news. Um, it's really good that they're trying to, like Wargames is trying to introduce a different method of play and a different kind of um, playstyle, should I say, into the game. It's just that it's, it's very, it's very dulling. Because um, it feels to me like, okay, sure, if you get yourself in a perfect position, you could probably, you know, have some fun playing this mode, but with destroyers, destroyers are probably the most interactive um, class in the game, you play a hell of a lot. You're thinking constantly, positioning, spotting, shooting, torpedoing, torpedoing. Cruisers, similar, you have really high, high rate of fire guns. Um, again, positioning plays a real, really important role. Um, and you obviously don't want to get caught out and stuff like that. Battleships too, you're always looking, you want to keep that hit high rate of fire. You're always looking for opportunities to, you know, shoot, do stuff, positioning. When can you push, when can you not push? Well, some rings is just like, I want to try and hit whatever I can see, and oh, I don't bump into a destroyer. And I don't know, I don't know if it's a characteristic of being underwater, but for me, and from some of the streams that I've watched, um, it just seems really, really dull gameplay. Um, and very one-dimensional. For God's sake, I mean, like, there's a gun on top of the submarine that you can't use. I mean, um... It's very disheartening, especially if you get into those late game situations where, you know, you might find a destroyer on really low HP. You basically have to set up the whole thing again. You have to get the sonar pulses, you have to get the torpedo shot. Like, it's very, um, it's very disheartening and um, it doesn't feel all that particularly good fun to play. But that being said, that's my impressions. I found them very dull. I played like three or four games and you're basically seeing the summation of those games right here. Uh, um... I wouldn't... I basically went back to playing Destroyers after this. I'm currently running the British DD line, so I went straight back to playing Destroyers. They just didn't intrigue me all that much. Um, and I think a lot of players are basically doing the same. Um, it's very similar to the, some of the streams I watched. They played a couple of games and then they just left them. Went back to playing battleships and random battles. But that being said, let me know how you thought of the submarines so far. Um, and if you enjoyed this, you can always subscribe. You can always like it if you liked it, dis dislike it if you didn't like it. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.